Hello, how are you doing? Uh, good, Lilo. Good to see you again. <laughs> good to see you too. And this time we're going to do an oracle card reading together. How exciting yes. is that? You have created many cards. And how, how, how are we doing this? Where do we start? Yeah, I, well, first I'll tell you the, the uh, cards that have been created and are available to people. Uh, starting with the first one, which is the uh, Power Animal Oracle cards. Cool. You can see that. But that's, uh, that's the original deck for, that I made. I got to say, not just I made, but it was a collaboration with me and the Animal Spirit Guides. Uh, 44 cards. Um, has a guidebook that goes with it. Uh, I'll give you a, a sample of that one. And I'll say, Swan. Yeah. And then there's usually a keyword, as you can see there, Grace, and a beautiful, beautiful image by the artist uh, Eric Nesbeth. And uh, I'll show... Um, I'll show you and the viewers how to actually use these cards, but to give you an idea, there, there's a, a brief message on the card, as you saw, yeah. and then you can read an extended message here in the guidebook. That's typically the way that it's structured. There's a guidebook with each one, and then a more extensive message from the spirit animal in, inside here. I recommend people, when they do the readings, that they learn the cards by also reading the extended. Um, about a year and a half after that, uh, out came these, similar, and that's messages from your animal spirit guides, oracle cards. These are a little different, different animals. Uh, same thing with the guidebook, for instance, it's a different artist. Uh, to use an example here, humpback whale. And what it says is, music is essential to your healing and well-being, whether singing playing an instrument or listening. So there's a little more extended message on the card itself, little uh, different kinds of animals than is than are in the Power Animal Oracle cards, and a little different kind of a reading. Uh, I'd say people ask me often, what's the difference between the two? In addition to being uh, different animals, there's still 44 cards, there's a guidebook. It's a slightly different reading, and the best way I could describe it, it's a Com a, a, a really nice combination of the intuitive and the logical. Uh, the logical comes from studying about the animal or studying the animal herself or himself. And the intuitive, of course, is a lot about what message. Um, I would sit down and say, humpback whale, for instance, what message do you want me to deliver? And that would be the theme and the message. Now, what I'm really excited about, too, is that uh, uh, these cards... These are a different kind of a card, and that's the Earth Magic Oracle cards. Ah, that looks beautiful, too. Uh, thank you. I was called to do um, these cards. It's a 48. There's a few more cards. A 48-card Oracle, 48-card uh, deck. Yeah. Again, a guidebook uh, that uh, comes with it that has more extensive readings. But uh, this is really unique. I don't see any other products out like this. And we just got a couple of copies in advance of the actual release, which is going to take place a little later in the year, a few weeks from now. Cool. Um, by the time viewers see this, so they may be available that October 15th, we've been told, is the release date. Um, the difference here, Lilu, is that these are different earth elements. Um, well, let's see. There's one of a lightning, for instance. Yeah. And then there's wow. one of uh, uh, wind. Wow. So these are, there's also several different artists that were involved in these. Uh, I actually started looking for one artist. That wasn't quite right. It just didn't find one. I thought, well, maybe three. And then eventually it was more just go after the image. Because the image then um, stimulates a response from me that I put in the guidebook there's two sections to each reading there's something that is a response to the image and then there's a communication if you will from the element the earth element that's involved so there's all sorts of there's four different spirit animals that are represented there's different aspects that of the earth there's even a love card that's quite beautiful and we've had some test runs with these and that it, um, and have found that they they are really are very accurate and uh, the readings are, uh, in this one particularly, I, I really want to encourage people to read each one, both 
the first section that's based on the image and the second section, which is the actual communication via the earth element. So um, what we could do, if you'd like, is if you're interested, I can use any of these decks. I think I'd like to start with the Earth Magic Oracle cards yeah. since they're new. Very you know, cool. We, they're, they're, they're very, very powerful. Um, I first ask, though, are there any questions you have about any of these or anything that would be helpful? Uh, regarding, you mean the difference between the decks or...? Or just anything about giving a reading or anything that I haven't covered as far as the, the initial... Um, now. Uh, okay. I might go during the reading or after. Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's go ahead. Would you like a reading on yourself? Yes, please. Okay. You said that uh, everybody knows everything about you anyway, so. <laughs> it's all open. It's all open. Okay, great. What I do as far as giving a reading, actually, this is true with any of these. You can do a one card reading, you can do a three card reading, you can do a five card sort of a T type of reading. Uh, my favorite one is the three card reading. That gives us a little bit more of a panorama, it gives us a little more complete information as to what is uh, being said to the uh, client. Uh -huh. so. so here we're doing a oracle card reading. Yes. And you're going to show us a three card. You prefer the right. three I would cards. Suggest, I would suggest the three cards because it gives us some more more information basically. Okay. The way this works, Lee Lou, I believe, one way to describe how this works is that the client has at some pre-conscious level uh, a sense of what the answer is to their question. The question might be about a general message. Could you just give me a general message? Could be about relationships, could be about career, about life purpose, any number of questions that someone would have. They obviously don't come out and say, do this, you know, or yes, it's a little more intuitive, well, a little more, it's quite a bit more intuitive than that, but it draws out from the person that what is just below the level of awareness, and it's one of those things where you kind of know what it is, and sometimes a lot of people say, well, that just confirms. Uh, for instance, I did an interview, uh, excuse me, on my radio show, mm -hmm. which is Thursdays, 4 to 5 uh, Pacific Time on Contact Talk Radio. Um, I have callers come in and I do readings on the air. And one lady pulled the ceremony card and I did a little bit of a reading to her. She said, that's so interesting because I've just started doing a lot of ceremony because I'm studying shamanism. So it was a confirmation for her. She said, I have a smile on my face. <laughs> the first the card came out. Uh, also, I suggest when people get these cards that they, they do some form of consecration. They, they really are sacred and they need to be treated that way. Uh, very special instruments, uh, uh, mine and others as well, not just mine, but any kind of divination tools like this. Um, I would suggest you take, for instance, and you, you just put your DNA, your energy, into each of these cards so that um, you have more of a resonance with the particular deck. Some people don't like others to use them. Uh, it's really a matter of personal choice. If you do allow others to use them, though, it again helps to go through uh, it helps to maybe put them in the sunlight uh, to just kind of burn off any of the other energies that might be involved here. So these have been pretty much, uh, I, I've used these. So we'll go ahead. I shuffle a bit. Uh, I would ask you first if you have a question or if I should just do a general reading. And then we'll see what the cards say and, and how that fits for you. Yeah, would you general reading would be good. I mean, I have a particular question may be related to career, but um, general reading might be good. Okay, and that may answer your question yeah. about career too. So, okay, Pachamama. Pachamama, I usually, in this deck particularly, here uh, for the animal deck, I call on uh, the uh, spirit animals, particularly I call on Raven. This is a spirit animal that I work with a lot that's uh, my main spirit animal. And uh, each of these decks are blessed with the energy or the power of Raven. Pachamama is the Spanish term, particularly in Peru, for Earth Mama, so Earth Mother. I generally just do an invocation, a very brief invocation, say, Pachamama, ask your blessing for this reading, that it may offer Lilu something valuable and helpful and perhaps even healing in her path. Now this part is just highly, it's incredibly intuitive, and in one sense you can't go wrong. So I'm going to pick one. Uh, three cards, one at a time. Okay. 
Okay, and then let's see what we got and what meaning that may have for you. Uh, first, I'm going to turn them over like this. I'm going to actually turn them around like this because this is the order they came in. Uh, fairies, earth magic. Nice. Second one is uh, winter solstice. Ah. The key is reflection. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Image? Uh -huh. oh. And the third is iceberg, oh. submerged. Wow. Now, what some people will go immediately into the reading just because of the nature of who I am and how I operate. Typically, I ask who I'm doing the reading for if there is any particular thing this triggers or uh, the images trigger or the words trigger. Sorry for the glare there. Try to get the glare off. There's fairies. Yeah. Reflect, um, earth magic. Yeah. The winter solstice. Reflection. And of course, iceberg, which is submerged. Do you do you immediately get anything at all? You uh, may or well, I do, but I would be interested to hear what you have, what you see. Yeah, what I see here, earth magic, fairies, for instance, is saying to us, you just got to get a little closer to the earth. That sometimes what happens is you get so busy and you get so caught up in things that it's 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 easy. Like many of us, it's not uh, unique to you, of course. Many many people, this is true because we're so separated from the natural world in our consciousness and a lot of times in our activities and actions. It's just a, a habitual pattern that's been handed down in particularly in our Western civilization, but not unique to our Western culture, of, of uh, not relating to the earth. And what uh, the reason there's a fairy in this particular one is in some traditions, fairies are considered to be the caretakers of the various earth beings. Okay, so that's that's the meaning or the purpose of the image of that beautiful fairy. Uh, earth magic means that there is, just like my book Earth Magic and also the cards, Earth Magic Oracle cards, uh, and these are associated with that book too. These elements are in the book Earth Magic as well, a little bit different model. But it's saying to you, Lilo, about getting closer to the earth and also just uh, being able to, uh, let's say, walk in the woods. Um, and, and breathe and enjoy and just really be fully present in there. And what happens is that magic starts to happen, and that magic would be something as simple as a, uh, you're listening closely to your intuitive voice and you hear some message from somewhere in, uh, in uh, that forest. That's, that's the nature of earth magic. It's also just the wonder and the awe at the beauty of this world. And when we can walk out and see the sunlight or see the clouds or this, uh, I just got back from Alaska. <laughs> that's a t-shirt I got up there. It was such a... a the air was so good, Stephen. The sky was so blue, and they were there were forests all around the facility I stayed in. So it's saying to you, you're a little bit out of balance with that. So it's a matter of you deciding, should you so decide, to get connected again. Now this, the reason for this, is spirit will give us directions through these or other means that may not make sense right away. But one, if we do enact that which is being suggested, a lot of times that. There's, there's further guidance. You know, I might be, uh, get a, a voice in my head, you know, of spirit, not, you know, <laughs> schizophrenia, but spirit, yeah, yeah. saying something to me like, you know, you need to go to San Diego. I'm going, <laughs> and then I turn on the TV and there's a show on San Diego, and then i driving down the street and there's a billboard or a poster about San Diego. Well, that's three, that's enough. I got to go to San Diego. I don't know why. How much, where's my faith? How much can I, I really trust that? Um, winter solstice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can see a beautiful, beautiful image, the stillness and the solace that's represented in this, and you don't have enough of that. It's just saying, you know, that a good, if you combine these two, earth magic and winter solstice, it means, yeah, go, for instance, go out in the woods, spend some time there, really spend some quality time there with all the beings because we are so intimately connected. You know, simp uh, a simple way to say that would be the trees. You know, we breathe in the oxygen they give off and we give back that carbon dioxide, which is so important to their uh, well-being. That's what they need. That's their oxygen. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, iceberg submerged. What that means is, uh, as they say with um, icebergs, nine-tenths of them, 90% of them are really underwater. What we see is just really the very top of it. 
and there's a lot underwater, is that what's percolating right now is a lot kind of at the at the subconscious level, which um, it, this this these first two cards are telling you that's a way that you can tap into that which is just below your conscious awareness. And now I'm tuning in more intuitively now that there's um, this is exciting actually because what it's saying is it's submerged but it's there and it's a matter of doing what you need to do in order to allow this to come forward, not to make it happen, not to not to force it to happen, but really make room for it. It's kind of like. Um, getting the field ready for planting, sort of a thing. So now you, the other key to this is it's got to make intuitive sense to you. It's like I tell the people like. Mm -hmm. Well, for I me it makes sense, but I, I I read it differently. It was more. Yeah. Um, I felt I felt like really I have a lot of support right now, and there's a lot of magic happening in my life to support what's coming. And okay. um, this this is this is really for me a sign to start on the juicy living tour this winter, where, which is like a confirmation of doing that. And okay, this great. Might like might mean that there are some things that I haven't quite yet. You know, they're still underneath, and I need to uh, 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 not let out, but deal with or. You know, or or you know, in a, or in a positive way, that there is some beautiful. There's even bigger plans than I think there is. But I I, I thought at first it more looked like part of me hasn't yet. Um, I have. I'm going into that area. I mean, it's going right. to be a big uh, spiritual growth and journey during this time out. Yeah, absolutely. And I, as I tell all my clients, I do readings for whatever you get. Trust that. You know whatever your impression is, and that's why often I ask first. You know what do you get? Because then something will bounce off of me in the resonance of what we've developed in our relationship. And I would still maintain though. You need yeah. to get out in the woods. You need to get to the beach. You need to get somewhere by lake, somewhere out in nature, away from things for a while. Because uh, what's saying here is that there really is a much. It, it's a needed a time needed for reflection. Not instead of what you're you're. You got. I'm saying in addition to because it's compatible with the uh, the meaning and the message that you got. I think this is a real strong one for you. You know, spend some time in um, not not. Uh, it says about winter and about your coming tour. Yes, literally, but figuratively or metaphorically, it's also saying yeah, it's a time to you know breathe out, sit, meditate, consider. Um, again, um, what was what I heard, because I tend to hear things, is it's just easy to get caught up in all the excitement. You know, it's good stuff. It's not saying it's bad or wrong, not at all. But it's easy to get caught up in that and kind of get out of balance. Yeah, and then, enough. yes, I agree with you. Same thing, similar to what I said. There's things uh, in this this particular card, there's things that are that are percolating, yeah, you know, under the, un, uh, in the less, that are not, not obvious to your awareness at this point. Cool. Is that useful for you? Yeah. Is there? Is there? Is there? Um, okay, could we do one particularly to the Juicy Living Tour, and maybe Spirit has some guidance? Uh, yeah. The Juicy Living. When do you start that tour, Lilu? It's planned right now for uh, beginning of November, and um, we're we're um, right now talking to sponsors and all this. And in my mind, I always go back and forth whether November is the right time and if it's going to start really on that date and but it's a 12 months tour so i've been 12 starting months? 12 months yeah and i started to speak with some investors that are large and um you know there's some there's some good stuff bubbling up <laughs> well, good for you well i appreciate the service you're doing for so many people with things like this i'm going to use the power animal oracle cards and just see what that shows up because now you've asked the question. This is for Lilu. Okay, Pelican, forgiveness, let go of your judgments. Okay, just hang with that for a sec. Bear comes up as a second card, boundaries. And the third card is opossum, or some, we usually call them possum, you know, without the O, but it's opossum. And opossum is saying, have a backup plan. Now, I'm going to do the same thing I said I, I do with clients. What do you get from these? Let me see if I can get them up to the camera. And particularly that sequence. I think this is a good reading for your question. Um, I'm not getting 
getting as much uh, first-hand uh, thoughts as the first one, to be honest. This one, okay. Uh, the, the, all of them, um, uh, I don't, I don't know right now. I'm quite okay. Of, I'm That's quite blank uh, as to the reading. All right, let's go. Let's start with Pelican. Let go of your judgments. Pelican is a. Uh, the other the other message that comes in about pelican is not the one that's on here, but it's uh, it's saying um, dive in, and what I saw was an image of pelicans and how they dive into the water they 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 float above the water just magically, float above the water, and the wave comes in and they just ride there like a foot above the water no matter how high the wave is, and then they swoop up like this and then they dive in. I think that's an appropriate metaphor and metaphor is the soul's language. It's an appropriate metaphor through this animal spirit guide for you is dive in. And when you dive in, be clear on your boundaries. That's what bear medicine is telling you or bear spirit. Be, be careful about, uh, not to be um, hyper vigilant or paranoid, but just be careful about people drawing the, your energy. You know, it's important, again, I go back to the first reading, the reflection, it's important to balance that. It's important to balance that with um, uh, pulling back from time to time, you know, just sitting there. Like Buddha supposedly said, don't just do something, sit there. <laughs> it would be a good one for you. Uh, backup plan, what uh, Possum is saying to me through uh, this card, having a backup plan or strategy is the strategies that you've developed in whatever plan you have, for this 12-month tour, there's going to be some shifting. So when you, it's simple as that. It's not not complex at all. And you watch over the next few months. You know, should you start the tour? And it says here, yes, go for it. Basically, Pelican is saying go for it. In spite of the message written in the card, I'm going on the basis of Pelican uh, communicating with me, um, triggered by this particular oracle card. Uh, I don't get it. it's about forgiveness so much in this sense, or letting go of judgments, what I get is about, yeah, taking the plunge. You, you're cruising for a while, you've been cruising for a while. So to really go for it, to get it started, basically. Yeah, and also Pelican sweeping up like this to get a broader perspective. You know, maintain that, you know, continue to look at the big picture as best you can. Go for it, take the plunge, say no when you have to, set your boundaries when you have to, and um, a possum, again, have a backup plan means just, you know, be prepared. You know, you might want to go left and the circumstances and spirit in some way is telling you, no, go right. And it's and ask for signs that, that help guide you in this way as to what the strategy would be as it continues to evolve and unfold. In other words, it's sort of like uh, when I give a talk, I usually have three or four. I have a skeleton or a structure, but I know that within that structure I can go here and there. You have a plan, you're going to be in this city, this city, this city and be prepared for these to kind of be adjusted. Not the cities themselves, but the actual um, presentation of what you're going to, to give to people and what you're going to offer. Does that so make sense? Yeah, and that's one of the challenges because I want to go so much with the flow. Like there's some authors I want to meet along the way on the tour. And at the same time, it's important for me to let life, you know, and the universe show me where to go. So. The sponsors is great, you know, I can tell, okay, this city, this city, but really my heart just wants to go with the flow and have no boundaries at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a balance. It's not about having, it's not about, uh, I think you're right on about being able to sort of go with the flow, but you do need the structure, but even more so than the structure. Again, this is what's being suggested through this reading, and I think, frankly, I think it's right, I think it's accurate is that uh, within that structure, yeah, you can still you know, move around a bit, things may change, plans may change, etc. In the reading for Possum, it says have a backup plan. Uh, I think it's good to think about, well, uh, contingencies is another word that comes to mind. Okay, well, this is what I want to do, then if that doesn't work, then I'll do this. Right. You know, if you miss the bus, for instance, you got to come up with another plan to get to where you're going, that sort of thing. So I think that's... Um, that's a pretty good reading for you, but I'm, I want to stress again the middle card, just like in the first reading, the boundaries, having time to reflect. Uh, I, I could see, you know, I could see and sense you're, you're really excited about this tour. 
Uh, a little nervous about it too, you know, that's understandable. It's a pretty big deal to take 12 months and go on a tour. And at the same time, um, at the same time, it's a matter of, of maintaining, uh, sort of catching yourself when you get caught up in things. And then saying, you know, I need some time to myself. I need time to regroup, breathe, refresh, etc. Uh, it'll be really, I think, good. I think everything says go, though. Okay, good. Now, check that out. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, that was fun. That was good. I, I, I like when you read with the animals. You like that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a little different way of reading things. I think that the uh, Earth Magic Oracle cards are a little more contemplative. And I think you have to, I, I suggest people, for instance, when they use the Earth Magic Oracle cards, um, you know, meditate on the image. I'll show you one beautiful image. For instance, this one, Childhood, Innocence. Very cool. And then um, somebody draws that and then goes to the book and goes, hmm, what's, what's there to say about childhood innocence? If I may, just read a paragraph here. Yeah. Is that a This is a beautiful, I read this a couple of times. Oh, I wrote it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wrote it. But I you know, don't always remember and retain exactly what I read, uh, wrote, wrote. Innocence is not simply the lack of guilt or shame, but a quality in itself one that you naturally possess when you first come into this existence. These, there are challenges you have faced throughout life that have further shaped your personality and character. You have also likely encountered moments following a disappointment or loss when you turned sour or cynical, and no doubt have had times when layers of anger or fear blocked the flow of your vitality, your life force, your vitality. Yet, in spite of all this, there is a core of innocence that you can reawaken by releasing any shame that is covered over the truth of who you are. Take any opportunity to heal this shame and let it go so you can revisit that state of purity. Doing so helps you see every moment with fresh eyes and removes the filters that inhibit your light and love from coming forth. You truly are a child of God, so allow yourself to be that. Kind of a nice reminder. Mm -hmm, that's beautiful. It even touches something in me as I read that. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It really is an innocence that we don't need to carry shame. You know, we don't need to, especially old shame is just habitual. And that, so if someone draws that card, they may feel just as I felt. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. You truly are a child of God, so go with it. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Well, yeah. that was fun. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You know, and readers can, uh, uh, viewers, excuse me, can find these on my website, drstephenfarmer.com. Uh, they can go to amazon.com, pre-order the Earth Magical Oracle cards. They're beautiful. The other two. Uh, they're really good tools. I, I figure these days, especially with all these things, just things are changing and evolving so rapidly. Um, we need guideposts along the way. Uh, and if these feel right, Go for it. Yeah, there are other yeah. things too. You know, the world speaks to us. Those are guideposts. Spirit animals, like we talked about before, they speak to us. So, uh, and God bless you for your work too. Thank you.